everyone, and welcome back to The Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome, and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. It's as simple as tapping that red subscribe button, making sure to select all after you have tapped the notification bell. And for many of you, I know that you um, view my videos on um, your flat screens. So, and it doesn't allow you to leave a like or a comment. So if maybe I can get some of you to start grabbing your devices that will allow you to leave a like or leave a comment, it would be greatly appreciated and it would really help out the little blue fly. Okay, so today, well, for some reason, all of a sudden temperatures have went down. Um, all week we're gonna be very chilly outside. So I thought this would be the perfect time to share some of my German mother's very old recipes with you. I'm gonna be going back and forth between two pots. We're gonna make chicken and dumplings and split pea soup. So that being said, Let's begin, shall we? So the first soup dish is going to be German chicken and dumplings. And it's just, it's pretty simple. Just a whole chicken, four celery stalks, a couple carrots, and there's two onions here, although I am just going to be using one. The other will be going for the other soup. And this pot right here is the most special pot ever. It is, this came, as you can see, it's a copper clad pot um, from Revereware, and it's very, very old. And my mother passed this down to me years ago because I love soups just like she did and I knew she knew out of all of her children I would be the one to keep this wonderful chicken and dumplings recipe alive for the family so we're gonna be cooking inside mom's special pot Start the fire here a little bit. Let this start warming up. And I'm going to go over and start cutting on the vegetables. So I'm just gonna cut down lengthwise on all of these stalks. Because in chicken and dumplings, I don't want, um, at least I don't care, the family doesn't care for um, really large pieces of celery. So I'm just going to make a couple cuts here and just share with you all the size that we like to work with. Perfect. And again, it's all to your liking. I'm just going to keep cutting. Now for the onion, I just do one slice down the center and you can see all these different lines, grooves in the onion and we're just gonna go with that line and cut all the way down. Make sure to tuck those fingers back so you don't cut those tips off. And then just turn it and cut the other way. And make sure to hold that onion because if you don't hold it, this is what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's just gonna fall apart but that's okay you know you can just go in there and continue to cut but make sure to hold that onion when you twist and cut 
So we have some good heat in the pot now. We have our celery, onion, and carrots. And we're just gonna place it right on top of the chicken. And I make sure to fill my water all the way up to the top of the bird. And I have to refill quite a few times. We're going for that good brothy flavor. Just going to mix things up a bit here. The family always gets so excited when I make this dish. Make sure to add in that salt and a little bit of pepper. Now I'm going to be adding in some bay leaves. And this is something that I have started with my children. So I take out three bay leaves and I place them, well, I'm gonna place them here in the soup today, but when I make spaghetti, I always place in three bay leaves. And when I get the ladle and scoop the sauce over their pasta, we never know who's gonna get the bay leaf, but, and maybe all three of them will get it, um, or maybe just one will get all three of them, but whoever gets the bay leaves, they have to give mama hugs and kisses. And that's just something um, special I like to do with my children. So it's funny, whenever they get their plates, they always get to search and going, oh my gosh, is she going to get me? Is mom going to get me? <laughs> it's the little fun things, right? Okay, now for the second soup dish. German split pea soup. We are just going to use two 16 ounce bags and it's because there's so many of us. Um, that's why I use two bags, but of the split peas, make sure to separate, um, your, your beans, uh, clean them very well. Make sure there's no pebbles in there. A potato we're going to use later, celery, carrots, garlic, and some smoked turkey legs and a couple wings. Now, normally I just get one big, it's very large turkey leg, but I couldn't find any. So I'll just work with these smaller pieces and they will work just fine. And you can also use a ham shank as well or ham hocks. It doesn't have to just be turkey. So I just placed all the pieces in the pot and we're gonna start the flame on up. Get things cooking. We have a good boil going on here and I'm have again a couple of the legs and some wings and it's just gonna make for a really good broth for the split peas um, and both soups I probably let both of these boil um, cook up probably for a good two hours I'm gonna add in my onion and celery and again, what we're working for here is to get that good base, a good brothy base. And you'll start seeing as, as time goes on, your meat will move away from the bone. Now, many of you might already know this, but I know there's a lot of beginners out there because I used to be one. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add in the bay leaves. I used to ask my mom, mom, I don't understand it. How do you know what to put in a soup? And she says, oh, baby. She says, it's so simple. She says, you just go get all of your good vegetables and you place them in the soup. And I was just like, 
No, it's, <laughs> it's not working. I don't understand. So I watched Mother for many years and now I understand. And I just, I feel honored to be able to share with those of you out there that are new to making soups. And if you have any questions, by all means, um, leave me a comment. I will do my best to get back with you. So just make sure it's all mixed up, the celery, onions, and bay leaves. Put the lid on it and just let it cook. Ah, oh, look at this steaming goodness. The chicken is just falling right off the bone. Make sure to remove those bay leaves. The turkey just turned out perfectly. See the meats all it moved away from the bone. Here's a wing I'm going to show you. It just falls right apart. Look at that. Perfect. Good smoked turkey meat. And again, you can use ham hocks or ham shanks. We're just making things a little bit healthier. <laughs> Stick them with the turkey. And look at this amazing broth. You know you have a good broth when it has this cloudy look. And here's our, our celery and our onions. Now I like to use this, it, it's a ladle, like a, a sieve type of ladle. And I like to use this utensil when I'm making my soups because I'm, I, I like a soup, a clean soup. I don't want any, um, my mother just would think I'm horrible for saying this, but I just don't like skin in my soups and when you boil you know skin falls off the turkey and it falls off the chicken and i'm like um no i just i don't like that <laughs> so that's why i like using that sieve ladle because it just picks everything up so our beans are nice and and um clean sorted through making sure there's no pebbles and this is, I like to get, try to get out every single bean because my mother, you know, she, she comes from, you know, Germany and, you know, went through the depression and, um, you know, just one of those parents where she takes her finger and she will rub it along every bowl, every plate and get every drop of juice or crumb that's on it because she went through the Great Depression and it was so hard for them they were actually starving one year and my mother knew this and she was just a little girl so she took her wagon she snuck out of the house because she heard that a train broke down and it was in between she knew she had to go through the battlefield so on her little tummy with that wagon she went through that battlefield and this is a true story everyone and she went to this train and got flour and rice and wheat and grandma knew right away where, where mom went and she was so frightened that she wasn't gonna come back. And when she came back with the wagon, grandma didn't know whether to spank mama or hug her and she chose to hug her and mama actually saved them from starvation. Just a, a wonderful story and there's so many of them out there. Now we're going over to the other pot. So again, back and forth quite a bit. So I have a little bowl and a spoon because as you can see, there is a lot of grease on the top. And um, that, that's some good chicken fat right there. But I don't want so much in my soup. So I'm just gonna skim over the top and just take some of this fat off but not all of it because when you eat a soup especially a dumpling soup you want to have that nice um <laughs> uh, my mouth is watering you want to have that nice uh 
greasy coat on your lips when you eat your soup and your dumplings. But you just don't want it dripping down your face, right? So I'm just scooping just a little bit of this chicken fat off the top. See, that's quite a bit of fat right there. But as you can see, there's still plenty more in the pot. And then I go through again with, um, on, on this pot with my, I'm just gonna call it a sieve ladle to make sure that, you know, there is no large pieces of chicken fat or, or chicken bone. Again, it's all about that good, um, clean soup for me. <laughs> Mom liked having all the little bones and all the little fragments in there. N not this one. <laughs> I'm the baby of them all and very picky. <laughs> Okay, so now I have the turkey nicely pulled apart. And then over here to the side, this is um, just the little nibbles I put to the side for my husband because otherwise he would be putting his fingers in my pot. So he doesn't do that. I always make sure to leave some to the side. And the bones, they're going back into the pot. So we have a nice, good boil going on here. And I'm stirring, the, make sure to stir the, when you make split pea, you wanna check up on it like every, oh, I go back like every five minutes because they like to stick to the bottom of the pot and they can easily burn. So you have to keep a really good, good eye on your split pea soup when you're cooking it. Now, I don't always keep it at such a high heat like this. I, I do lower it. But again, just check on it, you know, like every five minutes, stir it, and you'll see um, the peas expanding, and you end up, you have to add in more water because it really starts, um, they start absorbing the water. but just add a little bit of water at a time uh, because you don't want um, too much of a, of a watery broth. And again, gonna place in those fabulous bones to get that good bone broth taste. Now with my garlic press, I'm just gonna press in um, four cloves of garlic. This was such a great advent, um, invention, this garlic press. So there we go, just a little, little flavoring of garlic in there. And as the peas really start expanding, then I will remove the bone. Just gonna put the lid on and just let it work its, its business out. <laughs> now this is the fun part. This is where we get dirty. We are going to make authentic German dumplings. This is a double batch, so I added in four extra handfuls of flour and two teaspoons of salt, 
And so that's four cups of flour. So the, now the recipe for both of these soups are going to be in the description box. So again, what you are seeing me make here is a double batch because we love dumplings. A whole stick of butter, softened. It's very important that it, you use softened butter, not melted butter. But when you double the recipe, you do not double the butter. That's important. You just use one stick of butter. If you do a single or a double. And just with your hands, at least, you know, that's how I like to do it. Just really work that butter into the flour, making sure to get to the bottom of the bowl and getting all that flour mixed in really good with the butter. Baking doesn't get, and, and cooking doesn't get any better when you just use your raw hands. I'm trying so hard. I have this camera over here to the side, so it's a little bit awkward, this part is because I like to use my left and my right hand. But it's it's worked. The butter, I worked the butter in really well. So here we have the butter, the flour, and the salt, and I'm go going to use just one large spoon, and I'm going to I'm going to add in half of my eggs. So a single recipe is 4 eggs, a double is 8. And I'm just going to work the the eggs in to the flour. Now this, uh, oh, this part really um you have to use that arm strength. This is something else making these dumplings. So you just do like, um, sort of like, see, there I go. I am such, I'm a messy cook. I'm a messy baker, but that's okay because it turns out fabulous, right? <laughs> Anyhow, I'm going to start adding in the water. So it is one cup of water for a double batch, a half for a single. And it's sort of almost like, um, like if you're making eggs, like a, like a flip. And this is very thick, very heavy. And you just keep going until you have um, a smooth but sticky batter. Okay, dumpling time. This is how to dip, dip the dumplings, okay? This is, so as you can see, it's very sticky um, and it's a smoothed out batter. A lot of whipping with the arm. That's important that you get your batter to be just like that. You want to get a good boil going in your pot. And now this next part, this is key. You get your spoon and you place it in the hot water and you get your spoon nice and hot because this is going to allow for your dumpling batter to fall right off the spoon and into the broth. And the, the spoon is, see, there we go. And the spoon is gonna start getting a little bit sticky. That's okay, just wipe off the spoon and start all over again. And you wanna use a teaspoon. Otherwise your dumplings are going to be quite large and you just keep dropping them. And before you know it, there is going to be a huge pot of dumplings and that's okay. Keep dropping the batter because it will move right past the other dumplings that have been cooking and it will go to the bottom. They will not stick together at all. And then you let them cook 
oh gosh, and marinate all in the broth for at least a couple of hours. There is no dumpling better than a German egg dumpling. I'm sorry. <laughs> So I'm going to take you back over to the split pea just so you can see um, how they have really, um, it, just how it's a nice creamy texture now. The majority of the beans have just made a nice thick soup. But my family likes just a little bit more thickness to it, so I'm going to add in a quarter cup of carrots and a cup of a heaping cup well I might as well say a cup and a half of potatoes because it is kind of more than a heaping cup but the potatoes are going to thicken up the broth but um, the soup but uh, also give it a really good flavor now here I just used a russet potato but you can also use a red cabbage potato if you want to. Um, I just prefer the russet because um, it breaks down a little bit better than that of a cabbage potato. And just mix it really good. You don't want big clumps of potato in there. This is just a very very delicious soup with some parmesan cheese on it whether it's freshly grated or even the shake cheese out of the bottle the children like that with some cornbread or a biscuit oh it's just amazing but there's just one more thing one little it's the kiss it's the kiss on top of the soup that's right a nice piece of butter <laughs> Always the butter in my household. <laughs> and just twirl it around until it melts right off the knife. Absolutely perfect. And now we're going to go back over to the dumpling pot and see how they're doing. Look at that beautiful, perfect German dumplings. I like to press them down into the broth. I'm telling you, if you follow my directions step by step, you will get these perfect German dumplings. So the chicken here in the bowl, I'm gonna place it inside the pot. And I add the chicken back in later because if, if you don't, then your chicken's gonna break apart and it's going to get all stringy. And there I go again, being the baby and the picky one. Um, I don't like stringy chicken and my chicken and dumplings. So I just wait until the end and add it in. And all the chicken over to the right, well, we use that um, to make chicken sandwiches. Or we might grab a piece or two and put it in our bowl. So I added in a little bit more um, water just to have a little bit more broth because you're going to see the dumplings are really going to take on that water. So we still have a probably probably a good hour and a half left for these dumplings to set really well. Now this next step absolutely optional, but we love adding green peas into our chicken and dumplings because it just gives it um you know that nice meaty you know added hearty taste to it and it gives a nice color again this is completely optional
And as the dumplings cook, then the broth starts thickening up a little bit. But this is, it is not a thick broth. If you want a thick broth, then you can add in like a can of cream of celery or a can of cream of chicken. But I prefer to have a thinner broth with my dumplings. Add in parsley, fresh or dried, and let it cook and you have the perfect pot of German chicken and dumplings.